The rain fell in icy sheets as Samantha Ray steered her sleek black BMW down the winding road leading into Raven's Hollow. The quaint New England town, with its picturesque clapboard houses and towering oak trees, had once been her home, a place filled with golden childhood memories and the warm embrace of family. But as the sign welcoming her back flashed in her headlights, a chill that had nothing to do with the October downpour slithered down her spine. She was no longer that innocent young girl who had left this place 15 years ago, bright-eyed and determined to conquer the world. The woman returning now was battle-hardened, forged in the crucible of courtrooms and the cutthroat world of corporate law. And she carried with her a leaden weight in her chest, the inescapable grief of loss. The call had come three days ago, as she was trapped in a marathon negotiation on the 35th floor of her Boston firm. Her secretary's voice, usually so crisp and professional, had wavered as she held out the phone, eyes brimming with sympathy. It's your brother, Miss Ray. It's... it's about your mother. In that moment, as the words accident and funeral echoed tinny and hollow through the receiver, Samantha felt the armor she had so carefully constructed around her heart splinter. Felt the walls of the conference room close in, threatening to crush her. Somehow, she had made it through the rest of the meeting, barking clipped orders at associates and pounding out emails, a mask of icy control firmly in place. Only when she was alone, entombed in the darkness of her corner office, had she allowed the tears to come, scalding and furious, choking on the bitter irony that the first time she would see her mother in over a decade would be at her funeral. Her mother, Vivian Ray, had been a force of nature, a shrewd businesswoman who had single-handedly built the family empire from the ground up, after Samantha's father died when she was just a girl. Vivian had been an idol to a young Samantha, a pillar of strength and poise in her crisp Chanel suits and ropes of heirloom pearls. But as Samantha grew older, she began to see the hairline fractures in that perfectly polished facade. The way Vivian's smiles never quite reached her eyes. The tense, hushed arguments with Samantha's older sister Olivia, behind closed doors. The decanter of scotch that was always half-empty on the mahogany bar cart. By the time Samantha left for college, slamming the door of the sprawling Victorian mansion behind her, her relationship with her mother had deteriorated into cold silences and cutting remarks. Walking away from Raven's Hollow, from the infuriating expectations and the stifling sense that she would never measure up, had felt like gasping lungfuls of sweet, clean air after nearly drowning. She had vowed never to look back, had thrown herself into her studies, then her career, with single-minded determination. And when her devastatingly handsome law school study partner, Ethan Montgomery, had slipped a sparkling diamond on her finger and promised forever, she had convinced herself that her past was firmly behind her. That she was finally free. How naive she had been. The past, she was learning, had a way of sinking its claws in when you least expected it. As she turned down the oak lined street leading to the imposing wrought iron gates of the Ray estate, Samantha felt her stomach churn with dread. She knew what awaited her. The cold condolences, the sidelong glances, the barely concealed whispers speculating on the prodigal daughter's overdue return. And worst of all, the unavoidable confrontation with Olivia. Die away. Her knuckles whitened on the steering wheel as an image of her sister flashed behind her eyes. Olivia, two years her senior, forever the golden child basking in their mother's favor. Olivia, who had stood by Vivian's side as Samantha stormed out, eyes glinting with triumph even as she called out for her to stay. The last words Samantha had hurled over her shoulder that rainy night, a lifetime ago, echoed in her ears. You always were her favorite, Liv. You two deserve each other. She released a shuddering breath as she slowed to a stop before the gates, the iron bars glistening black in the fading light. Beyond, the mansion loomed like a crouching gargoyle, turrets and gables cloaked in shadow. Stealing herself, Samantha reached for the ornate brass intercom button. But, before her fingertip could make contact, the gates shuddered and began to yawn open with a low groan, as if the house itself was welcoming her into its gaping maw. Her blood turned to ice in her veins. Because there, stepping out from behind a curtain of Spanish moss-draped trees, was a tall figure in a black overcoat. 
Ethan. Her fiancé. Here now, weeks before he was supposed to join her. A dark silhouette against the dying light. And on his arm, smiling a smile that was pure poison, was Olivia. Samantha's heart seized in her chest as she watched Ethan and Olivia stroll towards her car, arms linked, heads bent close in conspiratorial whispers. The intimacy of their body language, the easy familiarity, struck her like a physical blow. Ethan had always been reserved in his affections, more likely to bestow a chaste kiss on her cheek than sweep her into a passionate embrace. But with Olivia, he looked relaxed, unrestricted, like a man in love. Samantha swallowed hard against the bile rising in her throat. This couldn't be happening. Not now, on top of everything else. The pain of her mother's loss, the suffocating memories of this place were already threatening to drag her under. The dawning realization that the man she had pledged her life to might be slipping away, and into the arms of her own sister, was a knife to the heart she wasn't sure she could endure. Numbly, she put the car in park and stepped out into the rain, the chill droplets mingling with the hot sting of tears on her cheeks. Olivia reached her first, enfolding her in a cloud of Chanel and insincerity. Samantha, darling, I'm so glad you made it. Olivia's voice was honey poured over thorns, a perfect imitation of their mother's. She held Samantha at arm's length, assessing her with a critical eye. You look exhausted. But then, the drive from Boston is so tedious. However did you manage? Translation. You selfish girl. How dare you stay away so long and leave me to pick up the pieces? Samantha gritted her teeth, refusing to rise to the bait. She turned to Ethan, who was watching their exchange with an inscrutable expression. Ethan, I, I didn't expect you so soon. She hated the tremor in her voice, the unspoken question. Why are you here, with her? He had the grace to look chagrined, raking a hand through his rain-dampened hair. I wanted to be here for you, Sam. I thought you could use the support. The irony of seeking support from the very man who was ripping her heart to shreds was not lost on Samantha. But she simply nodded, not trusting herself to speak. Olivia looped her arm through Ethan's once more, steering him towards the house. Come along, you two. We don't want to keep the guests waiting. Guests. Of course. Olivia had probably turned their mother's wake into a networking opportunity, a chance to schmooze with the town's elite and shore up her own status. Grief was for the weak, after all. Samantha followed numbly, feeling like a marionette whose strings were being yanked by an unseen hand. The foyer was swarming with black-clad figures, a swarm of ravens picking over the carcass of her family's tragedy. She recognized a few faces, her mother's attorney, the mayor, the society wives who had always looked down their noses at her, but they blurred together in a haze of insincere condolences and cloying perfume. And through it all, Olivia glided like a queen, Ethan firmly ensconced at her side. She introduced him as a dear family friend, but Samantha could read the subtext in every touch, every lingering glance. How long? She asked hollowly when she managed to corner Ethan in the kitchen, the din of the guests fading to a muffled hum. He had the decency to blanch but didn't pretend to misunderstand. Samantha? How long have you been screwing my sister, Ethan? The words tasted like ash on her tongue, but she forced them out. She needed to hear him say it. His broad shoulders slumped, defeat etched in every line of his patrician face. A few months, he admitted quietly. It started when I came up to help Olivia sort through some of your mother's things. We just connected. Connected? As if they were two lost puzzle pieces who had finally found their match. As if Samantha had never been part of the picture at all. She wanted to scream, to rage, to shatter every piece of priceless china in this godforsaken house. But all she felt was a bone-deep weariness, an exhaustion that settled over her like a shroud. I never meant to hurt you, Sam. Ethan's voice was pleading, his eyes beseeching. You have to believe that. But Olivia and I, it's like we were meant to find each other. Like it was fate. Fate. The same force that had stolen her mother, that had drawn her back to this poisonous place. The same force that was now ripping away the last tattered shreds of the life she had so carefully built. 
leaving her bleeding and raw. She turned away, unable to bear the sight of him a moment longer. Go back to the party, Ethan. Go back to Olivia. She half expected him to argue, but after a loaded pause, she heard his footsteps retreat, leaving her alone in the deafening silence of her own shattered heart. It was then, as she braced herself against the cool marble of the kitchen island, that she saw it. A single sheet of cream vellum, peeking out from beneath a stack of condolence cards. The monogrammed V at the top, unmistakable. Her mother's stationery. With shaking hands, Samantha plucked it from the pile, unfolding it to reveal her mother's elegant scrawl. But as she read the words, the world around her tilted, a roaring filling her ears. My darling Samantha, if you're reading this, then the worst has come to pass. I have so much to tell you, but so little time. First, know that I love you. I have always loved you, even when it seemed I couldn't find the words. You are my fierce girl, my fighter. Never let anyone dim your fire. But you must also know the truth. My death was no accident. I have stumbled onto something terrible, something that threatens to destroy everything I have built. I had hoped to shield you from it, but I fear I have failed. Trust no one, Samantha. Not even those closest to us. Especially not them. The key to unraveling this mystery lies in the past, in the secret your father died to protect. Find the safe hidden behind the painting in my study. The code is your birthday. I am so sorry to lay this burden at your feet, but you have always been the strong one, the one to seek the truth at any cost. Remember, my darling, the wolf is always at the door. Never let down your guard. Mother. The letter slipped from Samantha's numb fingers, fluttering to the floor like a dying moth. The wolf is always at the door. An echo of the bedtime story her mother had told her as a child. A tale of a young girl in a red cloak outwitting a devious predator. She had always assumed it was meant to be a cautionary lesson on the dangers that lurked in the shadows. But now, now she saw it for what it was. A warning. A prophecy. Her mother's death was no accident. And the killer was still out there. Samantha's eyes flicked to the doorway leading to the foyer, to the susurrus of voices and clink of glasses. Olivia's tinkling laugh, Ethan's baritone rumble. The wolves in sheep's clothing. She crumpled the letter in her fist, a cold determination crystallizing in her gut. She would play the grieving daughter, the jilted fiancé. She would smile and nod and bide her time. And all the while, she would hunt. She would follow the trail of breadcrumbs her mother had left her, unravel the secrets lurking in the shadows of her family's past. She would find the killer, even if it meant tearing down the very foundations of her life. Even if it meant facing the wolves head on. Samantha straightened smoothing her black sheath dress with hands that no longer shook. She tucked a wayward strand of hair behind her ear, feeling the cool kiss of her engagement ring against her cheek. No longer a symbol of love, of commitment. Now, it was a reminder. A promise. She would see this through to the bitter end. For her mother. For herself. She stepped out of the kitchen, a serene smile pasted on her face. And as she rejoined the murmuring throng, the clicking of her loo buttons against the hardwood sounded like a war drum, heralding the battle to come. The grandfather clock in the foyer chimed midnight, the mournful notes echoing through the silent house like a death knell. Samantha stood before the imposing mahogany door of her mother's study, the weight of the key in her palm heavy with the burden of secrets long buried. Three days. Three days since she had found the letter that had shattered her world, sending her on a desperate hunt for the truth. Three days of poring over dusty records and faded photographs, of hushed conversations with strangers who held pieces of a puzzle she was only beginning to comprehend. And at the center of it all, a name. Julian Ashcroft. Die. Her father's business partner, long deceased. The man who, according to whispers, had been embroiled in something dark and dangerous. Something that had cost him his life, and, perhaps, her father's as well. The study door creaked open beneath her touch, revealing a room cloaked in shadow. Moonlight filtered through the floor-to-ceiling windows, 
casting an eerie silver glow over the towering bookshelves and antique globe. And there, above the carved marble fireplace, the painting. A portrait of her mother in her youth, raven hair tumbling over a bare ivory shoulder, lips curved in a mysterious Mona Lisa smile. But it was her eyes that drew Samantha in, dark and fathomless, hinting at secrets even then. With trembling fingers, Samantha reached up and pressed on the edge of the gilt frame. There was a soft click, and then the painting swung forward, revealing a small wall safe behind it. The combination was burned into her brain, an unforgiving litany. 1024, 91. The day she had first drawn breath. The day her life had begun. She spun the dial with numb fingers, barely breathing. Inside, a single manila folder. A sheaf of yellowed papers, the typeface faded, but legible. And on top, a single photograph. Her parents, young and smiling, arms entwined. And next to them, Julian Ashcroft. Handsome and debonair, with a roguish glint in his eye. But it was the fourth figure in the photograph that made Samantha's blood run cold. A face she knew all too well, despite the passage of decades. Ethan's father. The papers told a story of greed, of corruption, of backroom deals and blackmail, a tangled web of deceit that stretched back generations. At the heart of it all, a scandal that would have brought the town to its knees and made her parents very, very rich. But they had wanted out, had threatened to expose the whole sordid affair, to bring the truth to light. And it had cost them their lives. Samantha's heart hammered against her ribcage as the pieces fell into place with sickening clarity. Her father's mysterious death ruled an accident. Her mother's increasing paranoia, the distance she had kept from her daughters. She had been trying to protect them, and in the end, it had killed her. A creak of floorboards beyond the door made Samantha freeze. The papers clutched to her chest. Slowly, she turned to face the intruder, dread icing her veins. Olivia stood silhouetted in the doorway, a dark figure against the dimly lit hallway. In her hand, the unmistakable glint of a gun. I tried to protect you, she said softly, her voice eerily calm. I tried to keep you out of this, but you just couldn't leave it alone, could you? Samantha's mouth went dry. Olivia, what have you done? Her sister smiled, a chilling stretch of crimson lips. What I had to. What mother never had the strength to do? She took a step into the room, the gun unwavering. She was weak, always talking about coming clean, about making amends. She never understood that power means never having to say you're sorry. Horror dawned, by rising in Samantha's throat. You killed her. I freed her, Olivia corrected coldly. Just like I'm going to free you. She raised the gun, aiming it squarely at Samantha's heart. But before she could pull the trigger, a blur of movement from the shadows behind her. Ethan, dot. He tackled Olivia around the waist, sending them both crashing to the floor in a tangle of limbs. The gun skittered across the hardwood, fetching up against the base of the globe. Samantha lunged for it, snatching it up with shaking hands. She aimed it at the struggling figures on the floor, heart in her throat. Enough, she shouted, her voice cracking. It's over, Olivia Da. Her sister froze, Ethan's arm locked around her throat. Her eyes, so like their mother's, bored into Samantha's with pure poisonous hate. You really think you've won? She hissed. You have no idea the forces you're dealing with. The Montgomerys will bury you. No, Ethan growled, tightening his hold. We're done letting our family's sins define us. It ends now. Olivia laughed, a harsh wheezing sound. You're a fool, Ethan. Just like your father was. He thought he could break free, could wash his hands of the past. But the past has a way of catching up with you. Smiling viciously, she turned her gaze back to Samantha. Just ask your fiancé what really happened to your parents that night. Samantha's heart stalled, a roaring filling her ears. Slowly, she turned to face Ethan, the gun still trained on Olivia. What is she talking about? Ethan flinched as if she had struck him, anguish etched into every line of his face. Samantha, I... 
He swallowed hard. My father was there that night. The night they died. He... He was the one who... The world tilted, the floor dropping out from beneath her feet. The gun wavered, nausea clawing at her throat. You knew? She whispered brokenly. All this time you knew? Tears glinted in Ethan's eyes, his voice raw and pleading. I only found out after we got engaged. I was trying to protect you, to find a way to make it right. The bitter irony so sharp it drew blood. Protect her. Just like her mother had tried to do. Just like everyone had tried to do, only to drown in the very secrets they sought to keep. On the floor, Olivia began to laugh, a high, unhinged sound. Do you see now, Samantha? There is no escape from this. No happy ending for people like us. Her eyes glinted with malice, with madness. But if I'm going down, I'm taking you all with me. In a blur of movement, she wrenched free of Ethan's hold, lunging towards the discarded papers scattered across the floor. Towards the damning evidence of their family's sins. And in that split second, Samantha understood. The secrets, the lies, the twisted legacy of blood and betrayal. It ended here. Now. Now. With the two of them, the last daughters of the poisoned Ashcroft and Raylines. She had a choice. To let the cycle continue. To let the secrets fester and corrupt until they destroyed everything she loved. Or to end it. To sever the dark roots of the past. And finally, finally, let the light in. In a single, crystalline moment, she made her decision. Samantha pulled the trigger. The sound of the gunshot was deafening in the confines of the study, the acrid scent of cordite stinging her nostrils. Olivia crumpled to the floor like a marionette, with its strings cut, a crimson stain blooming on the cream silk of her blouse. Samantha lowered the gun, the weight of it sudden immense. She was dimly aware of Ethan rushing to Olivia's side, checking for a pulse with frantic fingers. But she knew, with grim certainty, that it was too late. Just like it was too late for their families, for the town that had been built on a foundation of greed and deceit. Just like it was too late for the innocent girl she had once been, the one who had believed in happy endings and the power of love to conquer all. That girl was gone, shattered like the illusions she had clung to for so long. In her place was a woman forged in the crucible of loss and betrayal, tempered by the hard truths she had unearthed. A woman who would no longer run from the shadows of the past, but face them head-on, unflinching. Slowly, Ethan rose from Olivia's still form, his hands red with blood. He met Samantha's gaze, his eyes haunted, questioning. What do we do now? Samantha looked down at the gun in her hand, then at the papers strewn across the floor. The evidence of decades of corruption, of a rot that had festered at the very heart of Raven's Hollow. She had a choice. To bury the truth, to let the town continue to thrive on the poison of the past, or to burn it all down to cauterize the wound and start anew from the ashes. She met Ethan's gaze steadily a calm descending over the raging grief and betrayal in her heart. There would be time to reckon with his secrets, to sift through the wreckage of their shattered trust. But first, first, there was work to be done. Now, I'll, Samantha said quietly, a grim determination settling over her like armor. Now we end this. Once and for all. She reached for the phone on the desk dialing a number seared into her memory. The voice that answered was gruff, wary. Detective Pearson? This is Samantha Ray Doddall. Her gaze flicked to Olivia's body, to the ruin of her once perfect veneer. I need to report a murder. In a conspiracy dating back decades. She took a deep breath, feeling the weight of generations lift from her shoulders. And I have the evidence to prove it. As she began to speak, to lay bare the sordid underbelly of the town that had both raised and betrayed her, Samantha felt a sense of grim triumph suffuse her bones. The wolf had come to her door, had torn at her very soul with fang and claw, but she had stared into its eyes, had bared her teeth and refused to yield. And now, now it was time for the wolf to learn what it meant to be prey. Even if she had to burn the whole forest down to ashes in the process, 
It was nearly dawn by the time the last of the police cars pulled away, red and blue lights strobbing over the torn yellow crime scene tape, fluttering in the breeze. Samantha stood on the front steps of her family home, a blanket draped over her shoulders, watching as the coroner's van turned down the Oak Line Drive and disappeared from view. Ethan was beside her, close but not touching, a gulf of unspoken pain and betrayal between them. He had given his statement to the police, had handed over his father's old records, the final piece of the puzzle that had damned them all. And now, now there was nothing left to do but pick up the pieces. Samantha, Ethan began, his voice rough with exhaustion and grief. I'm so sorry. For everything. I should have told you the truth from the beginning. Samantha closed her eyes, feeling the weight of all the secrets and lies settling on her shoulders like a shroud. Yes she said softly. You should have. She turned to face him, searching his eyes, the eyes of the man she had once thought she would spend her life with. I don't know if I can forgive you, Ethan. Not yet. Maybe not ever. He nodded, pain etching deep lines into his handsome face. I understand. I have no right to ask for your forgiveness. He hesitated, then reached into his pocket, withdrawing a small velvet box. But there's something I need you to have. Samantha's heart clenched as he opened the box, revealing the delicate antique ring nestled inside. The ring his grandmother had worn, passed down through generations of Montgomery women. The ring she had once dreamed of wearing herself. Ethan, she whispered, tears blurring her vision. I can't. I know, I. He closed the box, pressing it into her palm and curling her fingers around it. But it belongs to you. It always has. A reminder of the love we shared, even if it wasn't enough to overcome the sins of the past. He leaned in, brushing a feather-light kiss against her cheek. Goodbye, Samantha Ray, he murmured. I hope one day you find the happiness you deserve. And then he was gone, striding down the steps and into the waiting car. Samantha watched him go, feeling a part of her heart break away and go with him. But even as she mourned what could have been, she felt a flicker of something else kindle in the ashes of her old life. <sighs> Hope. For a future free from the chains of the past. For a chance to start anew, to build a life on a foundation of truth, not lies. She looked down at the ring box in her hand, then out at the town spread before her, gilded in the light of a new dawn. Raven's Hollow would rebuild. The rot that had festered at its core had been excised. The poison drained away. It would take time and pain, and no small measure of grit. But from the ashes, something new could grow. Something stronger. Something pure. Just like her. She squared her shoulders, feeling the mantle of her family's legacy settle on her shoulders. Not as a burden, but as a badge of honor. A testament to the strength that flowed through her veins, the fire that even the darkest of secrets could not quench. Samantha Ashcroft Ray was a survivor. A fighter? A woman who had stared into the abyss and refused to blink. And as she stepped off the porch and into the first light of a new day, she knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, she would meet them head on. The wolf was dead. Long live the lioness.